Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Today we will discuss melanoma. Melanoma is a uh, dangerous skin cancer and its incidence is rising. It's because of due to aging population as most melanomas are diagnosed in uh, elderly patients. But its mortality rate is decreasing. When the diagnosis was made in early stages, the cure rate is over 90%. And even in patients with advanced stage, with a metastatic disease, thanks to the newly developed immunotherapy and the targeted therapy or combination of those new treatments, patients can have a long-term survival. Let's discuss more in detail and thank you for watching. Melanoma is a skin cancer arising from melanocyte. It usually occurs in the skin, especially sun-exposed areas but may occur in the mucous membrane, like in the mouth, intestine, eyes, or even in the nail bed, mostly caused by sun exposure, uh, ultraviolet light, but it also may occur in non-exposed area, such as sole of the foot, palm, especially in people with a color skin, in Asians or Africans. It is one of the most dangerous cancer, but when detected early before it penetrates deep in the skin or spreads to lymph nodes, cure rates are very high. Even with the metastatic disease, the newer immunotherapy or targeted therapy, the survival rates have been improved tremendously. The skin comprises of three layers, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. The epidermis has five layers uh, keratin, lucid, granular, spinose, and the basal layer in the lowest. The melanocyte locates in basal layer. When this melanoma confines to the uh, epidermis above the basal layer, it's called in situ melanoma. When the tumor invades deep beyond these basal layer is called invasive melanoma. The risk of melanoma is high when patients have family history of melanoma. History of excessive sun exposure or tanning bed use or ultraviolet therapy. Severe sunburns, especially during the childhood, when patients have immunosuppressed conditions. People with a light, complex skin, light eye color, red or blonde hair have a high risk of melanoma. People with a many over 50 of common walls and uh, atypical nevi are associated with a high risk of melanoma. There are suspicious signs of melanoma called A, B, C, D, E criteria. A, asymmetry, B, border irregularity, C, color variegation. Some of them are darker or bluish. D, diameter uh, over six millimeter. E, evolution, meaning the changes of shape or color over time. There is an interesting sign called ugly duckling sign. In person with a multiple nevi, most of them exhibit one or two predominant types, but when certain pigmented lesions are different, like an ugly duckling, the lesions are suspicious. There are four major types of melanoma. Superficial spreading melanoma, which is the most common. Nodular melanoma. Lentigo malignant melanoma. Acral lentiginous melanoma. There are some rare melanomas, mucous membrane occurring in the oral cavity, intestine, or even genitalia, uveal melanoma in the eyes, amelanotic melanoma, the melanoma without much pigmentation, spizoid melanoma, look like a spizoid tumor, which is not actually dangerous tumor, desmoplastic melanoma, and the pigment synthesizing melanoma. Superficial spreading melanoma is the most common melanoma. Spread superficially and the majority are diagnosed as a thin tumor less than one millimeter. So it has a better prognosis. Look at this photo of the uh, superficial spreading melanoma. 
Nodular melanoma is the second most common, grows vertically, and most of them are more than two millimeter thick at the time of uh, diagnosis. So it's a uh, worse prognosis. The open symmetrical, so it's sometimes hard to diagnose. Look at this nodular melanoma. It's arranged and the kind of round, symmetrical. Lentigo maligna melanoma is relatively rare. It arises in the chronically sun damaged areas in the elderly patients. Look at this uh, lentigo maligna melanoma in the face. If it's inside the tumor, it's called lentigo maligna without adding mal melanoma. Acrolentigenous melanoma is rare, but it's the most common type among colored person, the Africans or Asians. Rise in the palms, soles, or subungual surfaces beneath the nail plate. Look at this acrolentigenous melanoma in the heel and in the uh, under the nail plate. When the melanoma is suspected, you need to have a skin biopsy. Mostly, we recommend excisional biopsy with a one to three millimeter margin, extending to the deep to encompass the thickest portion of the lesion. With the full thickness, elliptical or punch excision or scoop biopsy. When the lesion is too big or kind of difficult to uh, approach, incisional partial uh, biopsy is allowed. After diagnosis, melanoma is confirmed by initial skin biopsy. Additional wide excision is required with the resection margins of one centimeter if the tumor is one millimeter or less in thickness. When the tumor depth is more than one millimeter, then two centimeter margin is required. Excision is down to the level of muscle fascia. Most micrographic surgeries allowed for inside melanoma, but it also was used effectively for melanoma in difficult areas like uh, inside the nose. Depth of invasion, ulceration, and the lymph node involvements are three most important prognostic factors. For the depth assessment, we used to use Clark levels and the breast low depth. Clark level one means tumor confined into the epidermis. Level two, it passed the basal layer into the papillary layer. Level three, it went into the uh, junction of a papillary and the reticular layer of dermis. Level four into the reticular layer. Level five went deep into subcutaneous tissues. Breast low depth measures from the top of the granular layer to the deepest point of invasion. Granular layer is right here. The breast low depth has been incorporated into uh, American Joint Commission of Cancer Staging System. If it's less than 0.5 millimeter stage one, 0.76 to 1.5 to 1.5 to 4.0 stage three or more than four millimeter stage four. But now mostly we use the little bit different TMN system. Melanoma cancer cells often spread to the regional lymph nodes. The sentinel lymph node is the closest to lymph nodes from the lesion and the first lymph nodes for cancer cells to arrive after leaving the primary site. So negative sentinel lymph node biopsy means no regional lymph node metastasis, although there is a one to 3% of false negative rate. Surgeons inject the blue dye and or radioactive tracer into the skin at the site of lesion or hour before uh, biopsy. And during the surgery, they pick up uh, lymph, uh, the sentinel lymph nodes. Sentinel lymph node biopsy is indicated when the risk of regional lymph node metastasis is high, which is intermediate thickness melanoma of one to four millimeter thick with no clinical uh, positive lymph nodes. If the patients already have a clinically positive palpable lymph nodes, they don't need to have a sentinel lymph node biopsy because we already know they have a lymph node metastasis. 
they simply need to have a complete lymph node dissection. The guideline includes the uh, um, uh, ESCO and uh, NCCN, which are a little bit different. Uh, mostly, sentinel lymph node biopsy is indicated for breast low thickness, 1, 2 to 4 millimeter. Even for uh, thicker lymph melanoma over 4 millimeter, is still considered for staging purposes and for decision for adjuvant immunotherapy. NCCN guideline indicates uh, that patient and doctor discuss and consider for stage 1B, which is 0 0.8 millimeter with ulcer. But for the truly shallow uh, melanoma, stage 1A without uh, 0 0.8 millimeter or less without ulcer, uh, do not need to have sentinel lymph node biopsy. When the sentinel lymph node biopsy is positive, we used to do a, a complete lymph node dissection to everybody because of the risk of metastasis to other remaining lymph nodes. But this complete lymph node dissection can cause serious complications like a devastating lymphedema. So uh, there are a couple of big studies to find out whether really this uh, complete lymph node dissection is necessary for patients with positive lymph node dissection. Uh, well, they found no difference in terms of disease-free survival or oval survival. So the patients with a positive lymph node biopsy, observation with a periodic ultrasound of the involved lymph node basin without immediate complete lymph node dissection is a standard treatment along with the option of immediate complete lymph node dissection. After surgery, patients need to have a staging workup, including history and physical to check the symptoms and signs of metastasis or examination of lymph nodes, laboratory tests, including CBC, CMP, and LDH, imaging studies with a CT scan of chest, abdomen, pelvis, PET CT scan, and the brain MRI, uh, are necessary for metastatic disease, or when the patients have symptoms, signs of uh, metastasis. For stage three, uh, these tests are up and down as a baseline. For stage three, breath mutation test is considered. About 50% of all melanoma have uh, BR uh, breath mutation. But for stage four metastatic disease, all patients need to have a breath mutation test as well as PDL1 for uh, targeted therapy and immunotherapy. Breath mutation can be tested with the blood using circulating tumor DNA with a 70% sensitivity. FDA approved the Garden 360 CDX blood test. It's more convenient because tissue breath mutation takes several weeks, but the liquid biopsy takes several days. But it's not as accurate as tissue biopsy. As I said, it's about 70% sensitive. For tumor staging, the depth of penetration is the key factor. Uh, T1 means tumor penetrate up to one millimeter. When they have uh, ulcer, we put the uh, B, so T1B. Stage two, uh, depth of penetration is between one to two millimeter. Stage three, up to four millimeter. T4, uh, over four millimeter. For the lymph node staging, N1 means one lymph node metastasis, N2, two to three uh, lymph node metastasis, N3, more than four. When the patients have the uh, clinically detected palpable lymph nodes metastasis, then we use the uh, B. So for example, uh, N1B, N2B. And the, when patients do not have lymph node metastasis, but have uh, in transit or satellite metastasis, like a, look at this picture, the primary tumor is right here, and you see the satellite uh, metastasis and the in transit metastasis.
then we put the uh, number C, for example, N to C. M means metastasis. M0 means no distant metastasis. M1A means metastasis to the skin and sub-tissue, muscle, distant lymph nodes. M21B is to the lung. M21C to none of brain CNS visceral sites like a, a pancreas, liver, kidney, adrenal glands. M1D means cancer spread to the brain. If the patients have normal LDH, we just use the zero. For example, M1C zero. If they have elevated LDH, it's, uh, we put the, uh, use the one. Uh, M, for example, M1C one. Stage one means uh, tumor penetrates up to one millimeter without lymph node metastasis. Stage two means tumor uh, penetrate up to four millimeter without lymph node metastasis. Any lymph node metastasis is stage three and the distant metastasis stage four. When the patients have positive lymph nodes, it's belong to stage three, then they need to have an adjuvant therapy with the immunotherapy or uh, targeted therapy. One exception is the stage 1A with a non-ulcerated T1 or T2 with a lymph nodes containing less than one millimeter tumor, uh, which is N1A or N2A. In those patients, adjuvant therapy may not be necessary due to the low risk of recurrence less than 20%. Or adjuvant options, therapy options include immunotherapy or targeted therapy. Immunotherapy with the pembrolizumab, uh, famous Keytruda or nivolumab uh, optival for one year. When the melanoma has a positive breath mutation, then they can have dabrafenib with the trametinib for up to one year. If they have no lymph node metastasis, even with a thick melanoma, do not need to have adjuvant therapy because there is no benefit. For metastatic melanoma, there are two treatment options, immunotherapy and the targeted therapy. Immunotherapy use the nivolumab with the ipilimumab uh, four cycles followed by nivolumab maintenance. The dosage can be uh, nivolumab one milligram per kg and ipilimumab three millimeter kg. But the recent study using nivolumab three milligram per kg with the ipilimumab one milligram kg followed by nivolumab maintenance, lower the incidence of toxicity with the comparable efficacies. Patients can have pembrolizumab, Keytruda monotherapy as well. It also uh, induced a high response rate, 42%, with a complete response rate of 14%. But the breath mutation uh, didn't affect the, uh, uh, the, the results. But breath positive patients treated with a targeted therapy previously didn't respond well uh, to this pembrolizumab therapy. When the melanoma has breath mutation, then targeted therapy with breath inhibitor and the MEK inhibitors is used. FDA first approved breath inhibitor bemurafenib for breath positive metastatic melanoma about 10 years ago. Although its response rate is pretty good, and, uh, reduce, and reducing death rate, but duration of response was short, like a five months due to rapid development of resistance. So by combining breath with, uh, inhibitor and the MEK inhibitor, this melanoma resistant to breath inhibitor monotherapy can be overcome. And the, now uh, all patients with the uh, breath positive uh, need to have breath inhibitor in combination with the MEK inhibitor. These are uh, FDA approved uh, combination. Dabrapanib with a trametinib. 
bimurafenib with a corbimetinib, acrofenib with a minimetinib. It's kind of hard to pronounce. The response rate is almost 70%, and the median over survival is over two years. Recently, combination of this immunotherapy and the targeted therapy showed uh, uh, promising results. Last year, the uh, uh, research data was published using atezolimumab in combination with the bimurafenib uh, and the cobimetinib showed the response rate is almost 70% and the disease-free survival over one year. It's published in the Lancet uh, last year. Both immunotherapy and target therapy are effective for brain metastasis, like a brain tumor less than three centimeters. And when they don't have uh, symptoms, then this is the choice. But if they have a symptoms like a seizure, you need to have a surgery or immediate radiation therapy. Target therapy works faster than immunotherapy, while immunotherapy is more durable. So patients have a high tumor burden uh, in need of rapid response, then uh, target therapy would be uh, better than immunotherapy. Vaccine therapy. Talimogen, Lapra, Rep, Beck, the uh, brand name is Imlygic, is a genetically modified herpes simplex virus type 1. Its virulence was weakened while the replication uh, ability is maintained. When directly injected into the melanoma tumors, the virus multiplies and kills melanoma cells. This vaccine therapy showed over 30% response rate and uh, almost 20% complete response rate in a clinical study, including overall survival rates. About half of patients develop side effects, uh, like a flu, like a fever, chills. FDA approved uh, in 2015 for unresectable skin, cutaneous, subcutaneous, or lymph node metastatic lesions. It's a good option for patients with coexisting medical conditions in whom the toxicity of immunotherapy may be unacceptable. Surgical resection of those metastatic melanoma lesion is very important uh, treatment options leading to long-term survival, even cure. Melanoma commonly metastasizes to the lung, liver, brain, and less commonly to the GI tracts, adrenal gland, bone, skin, and distant lymph nodes. Complete surgical resection of metastatic melanoma lesions offer a long-term survival to some patients. In some study, five-year survival over 40%. When immunotherapy uh, with the uh, nivolumab in combination uh, with the ipilimumab was given after complete resection, the estimated five-year survival was 75% published in uh, last year's surgical oncology and also surgical oncology. Another newer clinical study showed that immunotherapy with the nivolumab and the ipilimumab after complete resection or radiotherapy if it's surgically not resectable for metastatic lesions with a curative intent, the two years recurrent free survival was 70%. And overall survival was even not reached yet as pe many people still alive. For localized disease, most patients survive over five years. 99%, mostly stage one or two. When the patients have regional metastasis to the uh, lymph nodes, then uh, five-year survival is about 70%, and distance metastasis about 30%. But the prognosis melanoma is improving with the advent of newer melanoma therapy. Thank you for watching.